blasting, billowing, bursting forth with the power of 10 billion butterfly sneezes. I'm Tom Bain, and this is Wine, Money, and Song. If you're interested in wines and wanting to find out the best values, please subscribe. For the next few episodes, we're going to be going over Bordeaux's vintages, uh, going back to 1959. Now, that's very ambitious on my part to uh, go over 60 different vintages. And the reason why I want to do that is uh, vintages means a lot to the Bordeaux wine buyer. Uh, now, you have the Bordeaux wine buyer and then you have the Bordeaux collector. And a lot of times they're very different. Now, you could be a buyer and collector, obviously, but if you're just the collector, you're buying so the wines will go up in value. And that's the major reason why you're buying, you're collecting it. And generally, collectors should buy only great vintages, while the Bordeaux drinker should be looking at those vintages that are middling vintages, uh, maybe not great vintages, but there's production of some outstanding wines throughout the Appalachians of Bordeaux. So that's what I'm going to try to do uh, in these next few episodes is light out what the great vintages are, what the good to excellent vintages are, the mediocre vintage, and then the really bad ones that you need to stay away from. Now, as I said, I'm starting from 1959, and uh, the 60s and the 70s, most of these wines you're going to find hard to uh, find in the marketplace unless you go to auctions. And even if you find it at auctions, you have to be very careful about Providence, where those wines have been. You know, they could be very poorly taken care of and you buy it. I don't recommend people buying uh, older vintages like past 30 years of age because you don't know where they came from unless you can ascertain the provenance of the wines. But um, as far as the 80s, 90s, you know, you can still find those. And, and uh, I'm going to try to set you up and at the end of the last episode, I'll have brackets for you of the great vintages, the good to excellence, the, the mediocre vintages, and then the poor vintages for you to have and to look at. So let's get started. So let's get started uh, with this ambitious attempt to uh, rate the Bordeaux vintages. Now, you can go online and you can get vintage charts and everything. Uh, they're very general. And uh, I don't agree with some of them. And it's personal what style the vintage is and what style you like. So keep that in mind. And, and, and it's a generalization, any vintage chart. And remember that. There's always good wines in bad years. And uh, there's, there's uh, poor wines in great years. So be aware of that. It's just a general guide. So let's start out. I'm going to start out with the 1961, which is a legendary vintage. Uh, they were big, huge, classic wines. And those wines, many of the wines are still young today. And uh, rich Cabernets, uh, 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 incredible uh, wines, uh, very, 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 very majestic. And the year before it, 1960, was very poor. It really, you know, it it blows that vintage, you know. It's it's nothing. And then you had the 61, one of the legendary vintages. But I must mention the 1959s right before that um, were, were excellent, too. And some great wines made in, in uh, which are 59. Uh and, and they were sexy and lush, not as tannic as the 61s. And there's some 59s that are better than the 61s, in my opinion. Uh, I would say Chateau Margaux. Uh, I had the 61 and 59 Margaux, and, and I liked the 59 Margaux more. Uh, I thought the 61 uh, Margaux was too late pick. But the 61s, uh, phenomenal wines, legendary. And I said the 60 blows... 
and right after the 61 is 1962. And any vintage is going to be in the shadow of 61. But there were some really nice wines made in 62. Uh, but they were uh, not as large scale as the 60 ones. Uh, they were more manageable and balanced, but some really delicious 62s. Uh, to the 63, uh, that blows too. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you're going to see this as a recurring um, theme in the 60s and the 70s. There were a lot of really bad vintages and a lot of underripe vintages and vintages when it rained during uh, harvest and ruined the grapes and the and some of the grapes never got ripe enough in a lot of these vintages. So the 60s and the 70s had a lot of poor vintages and it was a very, very mediocre period for Bordeaux back then. Uh, on to 64. 64, there were some nice wines, some good Merlot wines, uh, right bank wines. Uh, but but it was an average vintage, and I don't think many wines are still in great shape, and I'd be careful uh, buying them. The 65 blows. <laughs> As I said, this is going to be a reoccurring uh, theme. Uh, 1966 was an average year. Uh, the left bank, the Cabernet, did, did, did very well, and some of the wines aged well, but I would, I would broach those very, very carefully. Uh, 1967, uh, they were very light wines. Uh, they were somewhat dilute, in my opinion. Uh, there were a few wines I liked, but uh, really didn't have body in the wines. Uh, some of the wines are very light, uh, very, very fine, but uh, they're too old now. Uh, and then we come to 1968. Boy, did that blow. That was a major blow. That was a double blow. Uh, uh, pouring rain. And, and I remember in retail, I was able to buy first growth Bordeaux from 1968 for like $72 a case uh, for Michel Henri Imports. Uh, and I was selling Aubriand 1968 out of my store for $9.99 a bottle. The 68. And I must say, it tasted like Grave, and it was okay. It was good. But it wasn't a wine to age, and it, and, and it didn't have the quality of a first growth, but it was a good Grave. Uh, but the wines were really bad, generally. And then we come to 1969. That blew, too. <laughs> you got 68 super blow, then you have 69 blows. So there's four years in a row that weren't good. 1970 came, and it was a nice, balanced vintage. Uh, I've had quite a few. Uh, a year and a half ago, I had Domaine de Chevalier in 1970. Really nice wine. Really nice wine. And still together. Uh, beautifully elegant. Um, and, and there are some very, very good wines in 70. 70 Montrose is excellent. Uh, I've had a lot of wines. Just be careful. Uh, it, it, it's better than average vintage, but uh, not long aging most of the wines. Then we come to 1971, and it was a good left bank vintage. Uh, you know, very, very good wines in the left bank, but not age-worthy, very light. Uh, but on one right bank wine, 71 Cheval Blanc is very good. Very, very good. I've had it several times. So we go on to 72, 73, and 74. All blow, really bad, rainy, uh, not ripe enough, uh, too cold, 72, 73, 74, really bad wines. Now, oh, I've got to mention, uh, yeah, uh, they were bad. They were bad. Nothing was of uh, interest. And uh, we went on to 1975. So we were all searching for a good vintage after all those bad vintages. So all of a sudden, they got enough ripeness. But the 75s came out of the gate. Everyone had great hopes for them. But they were really tannic, really tannic wines. And, and they were going to take a long time. So I remember I've had 75 Petrus maybe six or seven times. So each time I had it, the next time I had it, I liked it less. 
and the tannins were getting more astringent and dry. And each time I had it, and there's no charm in those wines. Now, there's some good 75s, you know, La Mission supposed to be good. Uh, but I found those wines very, very hard and very, very coarse. And you should be very careful with them. Uh, then we go on to 76. Uh, and I was, in, I was in Paris in 1976, and it was a very hot year. I remember my mentor, Ron Metzger, uh, we're sitting in a cafe and he's having bouillabaisse and it's like 95 degrees out and he's sweating bullets eating the fish soup. And I go, what the hell are you eating fish soup for when it's 95 degrees? And Ron looks up from the bowl, sweating, and he says, I love bouillabaisse. And I go, okay. And back then there was very little air conditioning in France and that whole vintage was very, very hot. Now, I know it was good for Germany, and I know it was good for uh, Alsace, made some good ones. But in Bordeaux, uh, the hot, dry year, and the wines were really insipid and, 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 and really not generous. And I wouldn't pick up a bottle of that. Then we hit 1977, and uh, that blew. And that really blew, too. I remember we had those in inventory. We had to give them away. We had to give them away. Uh, so 1978 came around, and <clears throat> in September, they had a great sunny September, and it saved the vintage. Everyone thought the vintage was going to be really bad. Uh, but some really good wines were made, but uh, everyone thought that September was going to make really great wines. Uh, there's some good wines, but uh, it's a middling vintage. Uh, then we had 1979. Uh, and I remember I gave a tasting in my house on Long Island. And all of these wines are very elegant, very balanced, but not big framed. Uh, and both the right bank and left bank were very balanced, high acidity, very high acidity in these wines. And uh, I like the wines very much. They're not very generous, but they're well made. And uh, all I can say is I had a bottle of 79 Coestinel recently. And it's really good. It's not big, but it's a very claret style, delicious, and, and very, very enjoyable. So that brings us out to 1980 and how to finish the 20 years. 1980 really blew too. Really. So we'll be going to the, sep the second episode and taking on the wines after 1980.